What's up, everyone? This is Adam from Slurve, Ship My Money on DraftKings, and I'll be breaking down today's pitching slate for you for Tuesday, June 21st. Today's a pretty fun slate. Um, there's a lot of really good pitchers at good prices that will make you actually make decisions, and then a little bit of interesting pitchers down in the lower tier. So for cash on DraftKings, I really want two of the top three for sure, um, and in my mind that's Jose Fernandez, Noah Syndergaard, and Corey Kluber. Um, but my favorite two are going to be Syndergaard and Kluber. There's an $800 price difference between Fernandez and Syndergaard, and while Fernandez has, I think, a higher ceiling, which is saying a lot since Syndergaard has a really high ceiling also, um, I think their floors are pretty similar. <clears throat> since Fernandez does struggle with his control a lot. Um, so I'm fine just going with Syndergaard and then pairing him with Kluber. And with it being a 15-game slate, there will be plenty of value bats that you can use so that you can do that. Um, so that's where I want to go there. On FanDuel, I definitely think that Syndergaard is the cash play because he's $1,100 cheaper than Fernandez. And he's just so similar as far as what he'll probably do that... I don't see the need to pay the extra $1,100 for Fernandez in cash. Um, for GPPs, it gets a little more interesting. I absolutely love Jose Fernandez on both sites if you can afford him, really. I mean, he's 13700 on DraftKings and he's 12000 on FanDuel. And both of those prices are expensive. But if you just look at the way he's been pitching, like he's just been amazing over the last, I think, like eight starts um, for the most part. And... He just, I think, gives you a ceiling that nobody else does. And at his prices, I'm sure he'll be, you know, popular, but I don't think he'll be as popular since, you know, you can pay less for Syndergaard and you can take Kluber, and there's so many just good options today. And so he's someone that I'm trying to pay up for wherever I can. Um, that being said, I do still really like Syndergaard and GPPs on both sites as well as Kluber. Um, Aaron Nola is also interesting. He's nine thousand dollars on both sites, and I don't expect him to be highly owned at all because of all the other options. But he does have a twenty-six percent strikeout rate, and he's been really good against righties, which is a decent part of the Twins lineup. Um, the one issue with Nola is his swinging strike rate is only about nine point three percent, and so I think it may be hard for him to maintain that twenty-six percent strikeout rate for the rest of the season. But he isn't priced like an elite strikeout pitcher, so I think he's still in play for sure. Um, on FanDuel, Justin Verlander is also interesting to me as a GPP option because he's priced at 9.2K, which is a lot more reasonable than his price on DraftKings. And he's going to go unowned since he's facing a really good Mariners team. But so far this season, he strikes out about 30% of lefties, which is most of the Seattle lineup. So he's someone that I don't mind using on FanDuel. Um, and on the flip side, like I like the Mariners on DraftKings just because of their prices. But um, on FanDuel, I think Verlander's a really, really interesting GPP play. Um, if you do need to go a little bit lower to save for bats, on DraftKings, I don't mind McHugh or Sonny Gray. And on FanDuel, I don't I don't mind uh, Tyler Duffy at 5600 against Philly. So that's what I'm thinking right now. I'll probably do my best to pay up for pitching, but there are some interesting, you know, cheaper options, like I said, if you just have an offense that you really love and you can't get two of those high price pitchers in. So that's what I'm thinking for right now. As always, stop into the Slurve chat throughout the day. I'll do my best to be in there. And if you need to hear from me right away, um, just message me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. Good luck today, guys.